Okay, everyone together. Om Ajnantimidhandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stavtitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Pade Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavane Swari Vrishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpata Rubischa Kripa Sindhu Paebhacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Zaraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai so last year, the uh, creators, or you might say the scribes in Iskan, Iskan scribes, they uh, somehow came up, found out that we have been giving the wrong dates for Bahulastami and the appearance of Radhakund. And uh, there was another date they also found was wrong, was the appearance of Lalita Saki, which, according to the regular calendar, has been two days every year before the appearance of Srimati Radharani. But that is also wrong. So those two uh, errors were supposed to be corrected this year in the calendar, but it wasn't. <laughs> So according to today's calendar, today is Bahulastami, which really falls in the month of Chaitra, which means the month of March, April, like that. But since it's on the calendar, and we haven't celebrated this year in the right time, so we can celebrate it in the old way <laughs> today. <laughs> so those of you who know, the, of course, before the restrictive uh, arrangement around the world has been impl em employed, millions, not millions, but close to a million people sometimes would come to Radha Kund on the evening of Bahulasmi, which would be this evening in India time, at midnight, and everyone would ceremoniously bathe in Radha Kund right at midnight. And it would, you couldn't see any water, all you could see was people. <laughs> it would be so amazing. I have never been there during that time, but I was traveling with the devotees in Chaupati in the year 2000. And uh, while we were traveling, doing the Govardhan Parikram, 
we happen to run in contact with His Holiness Sachinandana Swami, who joined our Parikram, and then finally we wound up in uh, Vardakund. Now Maharaj had been living in the Vrindavan area for a few months. That was his regular thing. He would go to Vrindavan for a few months a year and do bhajan. So now, Jai Baladev Prabhu Ki. <laughs> so Maharaj uh, wanted to lead us in the bathing in Radhakund. And so before he did that, he actually gave a lecture for about a half hour. Uh, explaining how we should approach Srimati Radharani's bathing pond, which is very, very sacred, and had been mis uh, ab had been abused in the past before by devotees in the Iskand society. Um, Maharaj spoke very sweetly, very devotionally, but very practically in how we should approach these holy waters which are non-different than Radharani. As, as it's explained in a few Shastras, but it's also you find it in Nectar of Instruction, that the last two verses in Nectar Instruction glorify the highest and most uh, uh, devotional place on the planet, which is Radhakund. Mm -hmm. There is no, th no spiritual place as glorious as Srimati Radharani's bathing pond. So Maharaj had instructed us, and most of it was about the mood of developing prayer. So in that prayer for mood, with reciting various prayers, we there was about a thousand devotees who were on that parikram. We all entered into Radha Kund, and it was about eight o'clock at night. So the, the air had gotten a little cool, and it was in the month of December. <laughs> so it was a little chilly, but we didn't seem to be bothered by the coolness because the water was also quite cold. The well, devotees went in, and we stayed in for about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, offering, offering our individual prayers to Sri Mati Radharani. And personally, I can say, that after I had come out of the waters, I felt like I wasn't no longer on the planet anymore. <laughs> I felt I had re reached perfection. In other words, the consciousness that came with that, and it was by Maharaj's careful instructions on how to approach Radha Kund in a devotional mood. And that was important because many years before when Srila Prabhupada brought his uh, Western disciples to come to Radha Kund, um, they went in the Radha Kund, but when they got in, they started splashing around like kids in a, in a swimming pool. And Prabhupada looked like Nisringadev when he was seeing Harani Kashipu. So he immediately, he, yelled to everyone, get out. <laughs> and the devotees immediately responded. And Prabhupada said, from now on, you only go to the edge of Radha Kund, take three drops of water, that's equal to bath. So ever since that happened back in the 70s, no, none of the ISKCON devotees were going in Radha Kund. But it's always been a tradition to bathe in Radha Kund. But Prabhupada stopped it because of the offenses that the devotees were but then again, we found that actually there is a way to enter Radha Kund in the right consciousness, the right mood, with prayer, with devotion. And so now, of course, devotees do enter into her waters, but we always have to be in that mood like that. So the pastime, or the story behind, really has to do with Krishna killing a particular demon whose name was Arista. Um, it is explained in, I forget what Shastra, Rupa Goswami writes that uh, Kamsa every day was sending at least two demons to Vrindavan. 
every day. Now the demons we hear about are some of the prominent ones, but Kamsa had a whole entourage of associates who were like him. <laughs> See, if you read the Garga Samhita, in the Garga Samhita it is explained that Kamsa defeated all these demons in battle and he subjugated them and made them his assistants and servants. So they become, became indebted to Kamsa. Rather than killing them, he just subdued them and then made them his, his uh, what we say, demonic entourage. So he, he, now he had this whole, you know, large number of demons which he was sending. And Krishna would kill one in the morning and one in the afternoon <laughs> on schedule. <laughs> And Purnamasi, who is the, um, the expansion of Yogamaya, she actually is Yogamaya, she's an elderly lady who conducts the affairs of the spiritual world, especially Vrindavan. She was making sure these demons come just before it was time for Krishna to have prasadam. Because Krishna didn't really like to waste time eating, he liked to play. You know, he sometimes you see that kids they don't want to eat; they just want to play all the time. <laughs> sometimes mothers have a problem with that. So you know, Yasoda was always calling Krishna, and he would never listen. He would just keep playing. So in order to get him to eat, they would send a demon, and then Krishna would be a little hungry after killing the demon. So <laughs> it takes a little work, you know, so you work up an appetite. <laughs> So, uh, this one demon, his name was Arista, and he was big. Uh, out of all of the demons in the entourage of, uh, of Kamsa, Arista and Keshi were the most powerful of all the demons. Arista was huge, he was a bull, and it says when he came into the area of Vrindavan, he was so big that his tail was touching the clouds. And when he walked, the entire ground shook, so much so that any lady who was pregnant and any cow that was pregnant would have miscarriages immediately. So he was so powerful, and just by walking, the whole ground would tremble like an earthquake. And uh, so he came to the area of Vrindavan, and then he was looking for Krishna. Krishna was one of, one of his friends, and Krishna had his arm on his friend's shoulder, and they, he was twirling a lotus flower with the other hand, and they were just kind of like relaxing and just talking about what's going on in Ljubljana, you know. No, not like, not really. <laughs> you know, kind of just, just nice, friendly conversation. And then this demon, he saw Krishna, so he decided to make his move. And so he was on the run. And he started to gallop, and that even created a greater term, turmoil in the in the ground. And Krishna saw him coming. He just put his lotus flower in his ear, and then he, uh, when the demon when the demon got close, Krishna grabbed him by the horns and spun him around and threw him about fourteen fourteen meters away. I think it was, yeah, which is not so far, but anyway. And then the demon went bouncing around. Now Prabhupada gives an interesting statement. He says, Krishna, he's expert at everything. He knows everything. So how do you subdue a bull? You grab him by the horns. Once you grab them by the horns, then you got the bull. And then if you're strong enough, you can subdue the bull. So Krishna knew that art. So he grabbed him by the horns and threw him. But Arista wasn't done, so he wanted to make his second attempt. So he came even faster and more angry. And this time Krishna spun him around and then threw him on the ground. And it says what, he started kicking him with his lotus feet like a, uh, a uh, what is it called? Uh, a dobiwala. <laughs> you know what a dobiwala is. <laughs> is one person who washes your clothes in India. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you give your clothes in India for washing, they throw it in a bucket and kick it with their feet. And that's how they wash your clothes. They step on them, that way it gets all the dirt out. <laughs> 
So Krishna, like a very enthusiastic Dobiwala, was just kicking this uh, demon. And he just kept, kicked him until he was finished. <laughs> and then he threw him away, this time farther to get him out of the way. <laughs> So the demon was killed, and it was kind of like, for Krishna, it was just like routine. And so that night, Krishna went to meet Radharani. So Radharani, he said to Radharani, you know, uh, you know, I've come. She said, stay away from me. <laughs> he said, why? You are polluted. You have killed a male cow. <laughs> cow killer. <laughs> Therefore, you have to go bathing in all the holy places all over to get rid of your sin of killing the bull. Krishna said, hmm, why should I leave Vrindavan? So he decided to call all the holy places to Vrindavan. <laughs> so before he did that, he took the heel of his right foot and started hitting it into the ground and he made a hole, pretty big hole. And then he called in his mind all the holy places and the personification of all the holy places in their personal forms brought their waters and filled up this kun and then Krishna took bath in it, came out and that's now known as Shamakund. So then Krishna said to Radharani, now you are also polluted because you took sides with a demon. <laughs> so you should bathe also. And Radharani said, I'm not bathing in your kund, it's full of sin. <laughs> so she said, I'm going to make my own kund. <laughs> so her and all her gopi friends, there were hundreds of them, maybe thousands, they started in digging with their bangles. They took off their, there wasn't plastic, it was metal, <laughs> bangles, and making holes, and they made this big hole. Then they start bringing waters from Manasaganga, which is nearby, which was a huge coon, and they were carrying buckets and filling it up. But the holy rivers were still there, and they, um, the personification of the holy rivers came to Srimati Radharani and said, you know, we would like to serve you by be entering into your kund. So Radharani said, No problem. <laughs> and so these waters entered, and then Radharani uh, took her bath there, and that became Radhakund. In time, as time went on, all the holy places in the area were lost, had been covered over by, when we say time, and uh, no one really knew about the different places of Krishna's pastime for Actually, for a long time. Uh, finally, after some time, one great king appeared in Mathura who was actually related to Krishna because Krishna had so many sons and each of the sons had ten sons. So it was one grandson of Krishna named Brajanath. And Brajanath was very enthusiastic to uplift and to uncover all the holy places of pilgrimage that were there, and he did a lot. Finally, after some time, we go to fast forward to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Vrindavan, he went to many of the holy places that had been found by Rajanath. At one point, he was walking, and he saw within this paddy field a little pond. Just a small pond mixed in with so many reeds and patties of rice. And Lord Chaitanya just started to walk over and take his bath in this little tiny pond. Everybody was with him. We're thinking, what is he doing? Why is he bathing in that little pond? Later on, Lord Chaitanya said, that is Radhakund. So, Raghunath Das Goswami, one of the associates of, the, of Lord Chaitanya, he made his... Uh, uh, service to bring back Radhakund and Shamakund. And so he did to a certain degree. But then again, it was just, just these two ponds. 
And when you looked at them, they were all crooked and really needed a lot of work. So Raghunath Das Goswami was thinking, hmm, these are the most holy places on the planet. They're not very f nicely done. I wish I had some money so I could hire some persons to... But then he thought, what am I thinking about money? I'm a sannyasi. This is not good. So he, he gave up the idea. Right after that, one person went traveling, who goes traveling every year, and he goes to Badrinath to see one beautiful deity of Narayan called Badri Vishal. So he arrived at his regular time during the year, and it was late at night, so he took rest. When he took rest, he had a dream, and in the dream, Badri Vatsal, his worshipful deity, came to him and said, the money you have brought for me, don't bring it here, bring it to Vrindavan and give it to Raghunath Das Goswami. Wow. He doesn't know who Raghunath Das Goswami is. He's in Bajrinath. Bajrinath from Vrindavan is how far? Ooh. At least a thousand miles, maybe more. <laughs> so, he's... Uh, and then, of course, um, finally, again, the next night he had a second dream, and this time... Uh, Bhadri explained that, yeah, there will be one sadhu. His name is Raghunath Das Goswami. When you go to Vrindavan, you just ask, and you will be directed. So he did. He took all the, the big amount of wealth he was going to give to Bhadri Vatsal, brought it to Vrindavan, and found Raghunath Das Goswami. And uh, Raghunath Das Goswami graciously accepted the money, hired some excavators, and then they made Shamakund and Radhakund very nicely. But there was still some little difficulty because on the bank of Shamakund there were five trees. And that night, Raghunath Das Goswami went to sleep. And in the dream, he had a dream. And Yudhisthira Maharaj appeared to him in the dream and said, Myself and my five, four brothers, we are these five trees. Please don't cut us down. <laughs> And so he stopped the excavators from cutting down the trees, and they remained there. That's why Shamakund, even to this day, is crooked. <laughs> but those trees are no longer there, because after some time, they disappeared and went back to the spiritual world. <laughs> they manifested their spiritual leelas. Now, Raghunath Das Goswami, he was doing his bhajan regularly on the banks of Radhakund. But one thing was bothering his mind so much. He kept seeing that the pilgrims were coming and they were using the waters of Radhakund for washing their bowls and plates, for washing their laundry, for washing their, brushing their teeth. And he became very upset. So he thought, I have to do something. So he decided to build a well so people could use that well for washing. So he started to have the excavators dig. And he was also there. At one point, there was a rock. And then they hit the rock with a tool. And when they did, the rock started to bleed. Real blood coming out of a rock. <laughs> Raghunath Das Goswami became a little shocked and said we should stop. So they stopped. And that night, uh, he had another dream, and in the dream, Govardhan said, You have hit my tongue. <laughs> so uh, please repair my tongue, but also build a little temple there. And you can see, right, if you go in a certain place on the bank there near, near Shamakun, I think, uh, there is this little mandir that was built by, or had been built by Raghunath Das Goswami. There to honor the tongue of Govardhan, the tongue of Govardhan. And so, hmm, yeah, so, uh, and of course, we go, we devotees go today to Radhakun and Shamakun to take holy bath like that, as we mentioned. So today is the, is the day, uh, at least according to the mistaken calendar, but anyway, <laughs> we're fine. Because we can speak about this pastime anytime and it's always appropriate. <laughs> it doesn't have to be according to the time. 
So this is a very sweet pastime, like that. And uh, Radhakunda is the topmost place in all of the planet for spiritual attainment. It's non-different than Sri Mati Radharani, like that. On the banks of Radhakund, you'll also find, of course, even today, Raghunath Das Goswami's Bhajan Kudir, Kutir. If you went there, you'll notice that you'll know that they do constant kirtan, 24 hours. They've been doing it for, I don't know how many decades. The kirtan doesn't stop. It goes on constantly throughout the night. Sometimes there's only one or two Babaji's just singing. But it'll go on and on throughout every day. So there, there is a Samadhi Mandira Raghunath Das Goswami. There is also the uh, Janava Baitaka. Baitaka means bathing place. There is a little set of stairs inside of a little enclosure. You go in and you go down. And that's where Janava Devi also used to come and take her bath in Radhakund. And she she would actually come to meet Raghunath Das Goswami because uh, she had heard about this most exalted personality. And so that's there. You can also see that. Uh, uh, like that. So I think that's the only two places that I'm aware of. There's little mandirs around there. I was there two years ago. And there was a mandir also in the area of Radhakund where you go and there was a deity there. I can't remember the deity's name. But that came up late, much later. So this is a little bit about Radhakund and Shamakund. <laughs> like that. Like that. Now there's a place in between these two kunds called Gori Kund. Or Gora Kund. I'm sorry, not Gori, but Gora. Gora Kund, and that is because Radharani and Krishna together make Lord Chaitanya. So in between these two, there's a, like a little walkway that connects both of these bathing, bathing ghats. And you can, in that walkway, there is also a little tiny uh, structure, and that is called Gorakund, like that, and the place between the two kunds, like that. So, Jai Sri Sri Radharani Ki Jai, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai, Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna Ki Jai. Sri Krishna, the killer of Rista Sura Ki Jai. Anybody would like to say anything? Or something? Okay, don't all talk at once. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So we'll see you when we will see you. Asila Prabhupada ki jai, Sisi Radha Kun ki jai, Pahulastami ki jai, Gaur Pimanande, Gaur Pimanande, Hari Hari Bo. Sri Panchatattva looks so invitingly sweet. They have such uh, very attractive dresses and outfits. Hmm. Very, very colorful, very, very attractive. Hmm. Simply by meditating on the form of the Lord, that is considered to be bhakti. <laughs> we take darshan. Darshan means absorbing our consciousness in the transcendental form of the Lord. Panchatattva makam krishnam bhakti rupa sarupa kam bhakti avataram bhakti kyam namami bhakti shakti kam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs>